have a lot of challenge with uh, the environment, uh, with food production, with the climate, as we all know. And many of these challenges, they refer in one way or another back to agriculture. So we need crops that are going to give us more yield. We need crops that are going to be able to respond to more challenging environments due to climate change and crops that are going to be able to sort of tackle new pests and diseases. So we need potato lines that are resistant to this disease. For example, we can address very efficiently the problem of the late blight in potato. To develop potato lines with resistance to, to this disease. Yeah, we can also work with uh, grapes and grape wine uh, because uh, now in the last few years there has been very severe diseases affecting the grape wine cultivation in, in Europe. This kind of techniques are actually going to use less resources and give back more in the future. Uh, in the case of pathogen resistance, for example, uh, if we can reduce the use of pesticides, this is obviously uh, good for the environment. Gene editing can help in several ways to sustainable uh, crop production. Uh, when it's resistant to diseases, the farmers need less pesticides. So it's better for the environment, better for the grower, but also for the consumer. Plants can also be improved in a way that it's helping to reduce the environmental footprint of food production, for example, by using less herbicides, less fertilizers, so that in, uh, the food production in general can be uh, more uh, sustainable. And also we can use CRISPR in a way to improve plants that they rotten uh, less, so, which means we can reduce food waste after harvesting, for example. If, some, if, if, if there's a majority at the, at the European level, that can be done relatively quickly. But reaching this majority is the problem. If European Union law doesn't, doesn't adopt to, to the international standard, they will necessarily lose out because the development will, the, just the, the tango will be applied elsewhere and will be adopted elsewhere. And then potentially the European Union has to buy at some point these technologies very, very, very uh, costly from, from someone else, or maybe they don't have access to technology at all. That could also well be the case. We need to use them now to be ready in the future.